come to show you in her glory elizabeth whose mighty name comes to us down the distant ages with high resounding and undying fame here shall you see set forth before you how english sailors spain's armada broke how in the thunders of the driving tempest the voice of god for england spoke we bid you ponder o'er our story we bid you love and follow these brave men remembering that the sea and its dominion for our inheritance was given then act one scene one summer fifteen eighty eight london a market two stalls and a bench at back of stage enter left jock nan and alice jock stands centre in front of stalls nan and alice on either side each has a basket containing bears for market they sing come in your, your bed, bed you sleepy heads, heads the day is shining bright the birds i mean to greet our queen are singing with delight the streamlet flows the wild rose blows in fragments on your way the daisy sweet spring at your feet and nods the woodbine gay the hunter is born, she wakes the morning, deeps of forest green. green. The, the shadows fly, and earth and sky awake to greet our queen. queen. God save Queen Elizabeth. God save good Queen Bess. And keep her from all her enemies. From Spaniards abroad and from traitors at home. Amen, amen, I say. Shall we see the Queen pass by today? Truly we shall, for she comes from Southwark and stays to visit the most noble sir walter raleigh at his fair durham house in the strand on her way back to the palace of whitehall and her grace will pass us by here verily her grace will pass down cheapside and i doubt not that the sight of our goodly countenances will give her cheer she will not look at thee master burwood not so hasty mistress hanway maybe she will look at me well as i said before her grace whom heaven keep returns to whitehall we must shout and show the queen that we citizens of london will stand true in these evil days and will protect her majesty from all her enemies we will indeed i will shout for the queen till my voice is cracked but these are bad times when the king of spain may come any minute and burn every one of us maybe he won't come just this morning keep good hearts we'd better spread at our stalls for the market spaniards or no spaniards coming people want butter bustles behind right hand stall puts out butter turns to jock and points to pail or jug on the ground by the stall here friend give me a hand jock rushes right and helps to lift milk on to the stall tis good milk you can see how heavy the cream is something's heavy i must rest takes apple from his pocket and plays ball with alice alice help me you're always idle idle you're the first person ever called alice bridgewater idle comes behind stall and stands left of nan jock plays with apple i've been working since it was light digging and washing these lettuces they're famous lettuces now this cheese i made it is the best cheese then i will just taste it tis good eat it not all i shall have none to sell a bit of lettuce that's excellent put out thy own wares now master burwood jock bustles to back of left stall my wares my wares here they are scatters out bundles of dried herbs water butter eggs cheese i can cure every ill with my herbs have you fever nope no broken bones nope. no have you not weak eyes i am sure you have weak eyes i trow i can see as well as you and better then rheumatisms eggs fainting fits take chamomile marjoram and broom flowers in pickle i'll buy some against the winter days when i'm stiff with cold and rheumatisms mistress nan hanway thou art wise tis one penny takes penny from nan hi hi new customer enter on left lady in waiting followed by a little page with a basket a noble lady madame madame my herbs are famed have you egg cough fainting fits we've cheese butter milk eggs lettuces cresses marjoram chamomile tea what do you lack what, what do you lack? lack what, what do, you do you lack give me one lettuce i pray let it be fresh 
sometimes i can fancy the heart of a young lettuce though after having tasted the choice plant called the potato which sir walter raleigh has brought us from the new world i can hardly eat this simple garden stuff points scornfully to vegetables this is a fair lettuce aside tis plain she's a noble lady nan aside a countess at least see her rich kirtle my lady this cuckoo paint i gather it myself in the fields beyond westminster what dost thou sell this for good man the root of cuckoo paint well boiled makes starch to stiffen your ruffs i'll take some it takes five pails of starch weekly to keep me in fresh ruffs to nan and alice i need no more from you no cheese your ladyship no cheese to page pointing to lettuce and cuckoo pint put these in thy basket and pay for them page takes up things pays money to each lady turns and sails out left followed by the page we, we thank, thank you. you she pays us handsomely she's a fine dame keep some of the cuckoo pint for me i'll have brave ruffs to wear a sundays i wish her grace could see my ruff when will the queen come i cannot tell the ringing of bells and the shouts of people by the exchange will let us know of her coming then i'll wait here and give her grace these flowers which i begged from sir christopher hatton's garden by holborn let me look at thy nosegay good mistress nan toss it hither toss it indeed they're flowers for a queen jock and nan come centre in front of stall she gives him nosegay have a care how you handle it roses red and white that's well for her grace is the rose of england lilies all that suits likewise for she is a maiden queen and marigolds yes we'll have the gold drake and his merry men will bring gold from the new world but we'll have no mary for that was the queen of scots take thy bunch art not afraid to give so mean a posy to the queen nay for i was there when she rode to be crowned and i did see her take the nosegays and tokens with most tender words the bough of herbs which a poor woman gave her at fleet bridge was seen in her chariot when she reached westminster i remember how she smiled and lifted up her hands to those who could not get near for the crowds god save queen elizabeth i say again and send us no outlandish folk now have we a queen who is one of us and mere english like ourselves jock fetches bench and sets it centre in front of stalls takes nan and alice by the hand leads them to bench can i trust you with a secret truly sooner would i break every egg in that basket than break my oath. i too jock seats himself nan and alice sit either side right and left then see you draws out a letter with care snatches it from alice who tries to examine it you must not handle it so roughly listen both of you my name is writ in this letter thy name it is in this letter am i named john burwood see you it is so john burwood of bucklersbury herb merchant what hast thou done friend jock done i am one of her grace's servants i am here bidden to be one of the men sent by lord burleigh to spy in london on the traitors who conspire against her grace's life and realm hark you there are deadly plots around us and the king of spain has companies of men in his pay who are hid in this city maybe in these very streets and alleys i am terrified we may all be terrified for there are plots to kill the queen and set up the cruel king philip in this land if the spaniards come they will throw us in prison burn us what can so small a people as we do against spain we shall be destroyed i tremble with terror this is no hour for trembling no truly we must meet danger with a stout heart yes and meet cunning with cunning and craft with craft i say that's what my lord burleigh and sir francis walsingham think too now listen in the letter i am commanded to hide in a cellar under an empty house close by here for there will certain evil men meet to plan deadly work to betray their country hush hush someone comes enter on left will of babacombe jock nan and alice rise quickly will aside doubtless some traitor's plot and mischief jock to nan and alice this is some vile and treasonable person come to spy on my conversation to will what is thy business knave 
Maybe it's better business than yarn. Jock springs at Will and shakes him. Talk not thus to me, and in that villain-like voice. Will pushes Jack off. I speak as I likes, and you trade me not with civility, I lay thee low amongst thy baskets, London huckster. Jock snatches up stick, on which herbs are tied, rushes at him again. Nan pulls Jock away. Alice pushes Will away. Peace, peace, ye firebrands. If the Queen's procession comes by, you will both be thrown in jail for brawling in the streets. Let him alone, friend Jock. Maybe he is honest, even if you cannot understand his speech readily. Put up your cudgel. I see thy swarthy face hidden under a good sailor's cap. I'll have thee lodged in prison for a Spanish spy. I can do so. I've the power. Will throws himself on bench, laughs, holds his sides. A Spanish spy! Now, by my lord, that's, that's a good jest. I've seen and heard much on my travels, but never was I taken for a Spaniard before. A Devon sailor, I. I've seen more of Spaniards than most of ye, but they loved I not. They loved not Long Bill of Babacombe. Your honour has been in the sea fights? Truly, foul mistress, that was I. I fought her grace's battle in many days, in hunger and thirst, and cold and hate, and under the flag of the most noble Sir Francis Drake. A Drake's man? A Drake's man? Aye, a Drake's man. Long, Long life to, to Sir Francis, Francis Drake. Drake. The terror of the Spaniards. You're a brave fellow, and I will give you my hand and welcome you with joy to the city of London. What can we do for you? Will you take some herbs to refresh you after your travels? Nay, nah, horse hail enough, though there be many of our sailors lying sick at Southampton. Take something to eat, then. Nan rushes to stall, fetches eggs. Deign to eat a few of these eggs, fresh from the farm by Whitechapel. Thanks, good mistress, or is hungry enough to eat the whole farmyard. Alice fetches lettuce, etc. And take some of my lettuce and a pasty, good sir. Will sits down and eats. I'll eat gladly. We sailors get but scant victual. With joy we spread our plenty at the feet of men who's fought the Spaniards. Ah, oh, I've done that by my troth. I must laugh. I must laugh. What ails you? Nay, not, not. So you took off for a Spaniard. Why, uh, for a Spaniard. I did, your noble and sunburned cheek. Did mislead you. And I, too, did mistake you, for I took ye for a bunch of treason mongers huddled together in a corner of the market place. Treason mongers? We are honest citizens. Moreover, I am an agent of my Lord Burley, the Lord High Treasurer of England. Draws himself up and flourishes stick. I am well thought of, I can tell you. Aye, that's certain. Takes off his cap to Jock. Jock bows. I give you thanks. The land is honeycombed with dangers. Scarce can we sleep in our beds for fear. And if I do but hear a brawl in the street, I think it is the black-eyed Spaniards come to slay us. If I see a red light in the sky, I say to myself, When King Philip comes, so will the fires at Smithfield light the skies. Not while Drake and Hawkins sail the seas, I warrant. Not while the brave citizens of London live. Nan and Alice go behind stalls, set goods in order. Look you, her majesty come this way. She comes this way? Then I'll boy here, and the man of the west country'll shout as loud as any of ye for the queen. I'll have my flowers ready. There's time enough, maybe? Let's have a dance. Jumps up, picks up bench, puts it back. Push back your stalls, and we'll fling up our heels and have a merry dance. A, a dance, dance, a dance. dance! They all push back stalls. Jock stuffs in letter. Softly, softly, I have that upon me which must be used carefully. Remember my office. I will remember your office, but let's forget our griefs a while. Stick thy posy on his staff. Takes his stick, ties nosegay to it. Though summer sunshine hot this morn, and though foes be near, we'll have a maypole and a merry dance. They join hands. Jock dances with Nan, Will with Alice. Dance. Exeunt. Scene two. A cellar in a house near Cheapside. All is dark. 
boxes or cask at back of stage enter jock on tiptoe from left soft soft i found the secret door to this black hole a nice place for honest jock burwood herb merchant of bucklersbury to be in but i can spy upon the traitors they'll meet in this cellar to plot the queen's destruction i'll hide in the dark what's this an empty cask i can hide behind it and listen and bring word of what i hear to my lord burleigh he seeks to find out the men who are hired to betray their country to the king of spain he hides all is still and a faint tap tap enter on left two conspirators muffled in black cloaks hats drawn over eyes one with a lantern tis here we were to meet are we safe keep still and wait quietly but when shall we have the money which the king of spain has sent for our enterprise one of our people brings the money now i trust it will not be long before he comes for i like not this place think you we are safe twere death if we were found shall i not search round us you will make a sound if hark someone comes say the password enter on left third conspirator in similar fashion he carries money bags doom, doom of, of elizabeth. elizabeth victoria spain all's well tis our friend well met here i am speak low speak low we are well hid tis a secret door by which we came moreover no man has dwelt in the house above for many a day they say a ghost walks here ghost i care not so long as no spies walk here where's the money ay the money the money we risk not lives for nothing third conspirator opens cloak first and second come close right and left of him here's the money from the king of spain he has not stinted us here take your share i will give me my share of the gold there's more money for us later our work has but just begun how can the queen be got away nay i know not for she is well guarded by the people who love her well the nobles of the realm are pledged for her safety tush men ever side with the strongest england is poor threatened by foes she lacks ships food for sailors there's sickness in the fleet the spaniards will make light work of this ant hill when they come king philip will present england to the infanta as a little gift all laugh low faint sound heard what's that what's that are we discovered twas but a rat or the ghost sheep hearted how many ships hath the king of spain in readiness to attack england some one hundred thirty ships with many from italy and portugal tis the most splendid fleet that ever set sail well do the spaniards call it the invincible armada in my journeyings in and out of spain i have seen them high as mountains stand the ships so that the very waves seem wearied with their weight marvellous indeed it surpasses all the undertakings of ancient or modern times they will bring thousands of soldiers with arms and food beyond reckoning all the noblest families of castile and aragon have sent their sons upon this glorious enterprise the duke of medina sidonia commands with all the great admirals of spain don pedro de valdez or cando and the rest when will they sail this summer now they are perhaps sailing as we speak king philip is roused at last he will not let elizabeth help his rebels in the netherlands any more or suffer drake that dragon of the seas to plunder and burn the spanish ships in their own harbors hark something did stir truly i did hear a sound oh think you one of burley's spies is near we are in peril let us fly quickly quickly rushes to door left others pull him back poltroon fear not listen the gay and cruel elizabeth shall go soon shall her laughter be silent and a better even the king of spain shall reign in her stead remember you are pledged i am to the end and you likewise i am the die is cast we've thrown in our lot with the foes of england ours is the strong side and the game is ours 
friends we shall not always be the poor cringing men we are now we shall have honour and rich rewards when the banner of castile waves over london ay ay the banner of castile over london tread softly i'll go out quietly left jock slowly comes from hiding place they are gone they are gone ha ha my masters i know the way out of this rat hole as well as you do i have heard enough to content me these brave tidings will i straightway bring to my lord burley and one day you shall know ye wretched hirelings and traitors that your words are lies shakes his fist exit scene three the palace whitehall london a throne council table in front of it in centre of stage chairs on right enter left lord burleigh and sir walter raleigh they seat themselves right burleigh next to throne but facing audience full thirty years have i been her grace's counsellor and we have encountered many a danger together there are fresh plots abroad grievous perils any moment the queen may be slain by poison or the traitor's dagger it is but a little while since that some one hid in the garden to slay the queen as she walked alone there at evening only her lion-like look the look of old king harry daunted him and he fled god save her majesty from danger she is the hope as she is the glory of this realm alas the death of the queen of scots has not secured this peace spain is said to compass our destruction king philip has spies throughout this land everywhere among our own people we find receivers of the spaniards gold even to-day has news come to my ears through a spy who was present at the traitor's council they plot the queen's death and the immediate coming of the spaniard enter left sir francis drake the coming of the spaniards say you twill be the gladdest day of our lives when we see them come truly sir francis and methinks that glad day is not far off i have continually besought her grace that we be well prepared alas her majesty spares gold she has not paid the money she promised full often moreover in one day the royal temper changes a score of times drake sits down right her grace's temper is variable as april with the shrewd winds of march and january mingled this matter touches the safety of the realm truly my lord and if the armada which is now sailing against us makes a meeting with the duke of parma it will go ill with us i doubt the power of our general to protect us on the land alas the queen will hear not but that leicester shall have the command on the land i rejoice that we are better furnished on the sea drake bows to burleigh that is true hark you here comes her grace room for the queen all rise then drop on one knee as queen attended by lady in waiting and page enters left the, the queen. queen my lords we greet too well they rise from their knees raleigh steps forward offers to help queen to mount her throne she pushes him aside nay we are not grown so old as to need the help of even your arm my lord in mounting to our throne seats herself lady-in-waiting stands behind with page left old age has no part in your grace no part in our fairy queen most glorious gloriana would that my gentle friend edmund spencer were home from ireland to sing your praise yet listen madame to these faltering strains steps forward and sings the reddest rose will fade at last fair lilies have their day and buds which shine in morning light ere the eve must die away but thou my queen untouched by time thy beauty bright dost stay and when the world to darkness turns it shall 
with no decay. Take thou the glory of the stars, unchanging thou as they. Take thou my heart, the for thine own, which shall not pass away. I like the song, Sir Walter. Now, my lords, I will prove your words true, and that time's hand has not rudely touched me by dancing a measure before you to-night, and in a fairer gown than this poor rag, displays her fine dress turns and notices lady-in-waiting wearing a handsome kirtle you have a marvellous fine kirtle good mole rises come in front of table i will try it on lady-in-waiting takes off kirtle queen holds it against her own dress think you my new fancied border becomes me is it not much too short and ill-becoming craving your grace's pardon it is verily much too short for your majesty i'll not contradict you mole but if it becomes not me as being too short it shall never become you as being too fine good mistress mary flings kirtle to back of stage lady in waiting aside alas i shall not dare to wear my brave kirtle any more queen sits down again my lords i rejoice to see you here sir francis drake we greet you well your majesty's faithful servant my lord burley my most grave counsellor hi sir spirit your cloak is awry pulls his cloak burleigh quietly hitches up cloak nay sit my lord we know you suffer from the gout and it is with your head and not your legs we would have you serve us burleigh bows and sits down i thank your highness with your leave we must discuss grave matters we speak of the many plots against your grace your death would bring civil war my death tut tut I shall not die so soon. But if I did, and the King of Spain gave you a new ruler, I warrant, my lords, all your heads would soon be flying. My ghost would come back and laugh at the gay scene. <laughs> Yet hearken, for ourselves we have no fear. But, seeing that our safety touches the good of our people, I will listen to your counsels. For myself, I am content, if need be, to die, and have no fear so to do. This will I say, England may have a greater, but never a more loving sovereign than Elizabeth. And never sovereign more loving subjects. I thank you. I will find means to mend your fortunes, my fond Walter. You have given us much. The tobacco herb is your gift, and the strange root of the potato. You promise us gold from the treasuries of the new world. Raleigh kneels. Queen pats him on the head. He offers her a chain. Wear this, my queen, as a pledge of your poor servant's faith. Rises. That will I. It pleases me. I'll wear it for your sake. Nay, frown not, Sir Francis, but stand at my right hand. What would you counsel us? Drake comes and puts hand on council table. Madam, the time presses. A terrible danger threatens us now. Our spies assure us that the Spanish king is at last ready and that his armada will sail immediately. It is perhaps coming now while we speak. It is a fleet such the world has not seen before. It comes to attack us. Pray heaven we be ready. Let us not lose time. Lose time? Truly, your grace, delay is perilous. Time flies and will not return. Your highness, the wings of man's life are plumed with the feathers of death. A fair saying nay madam delay and hesitate no longer stop king philip now and stop him ever give me leave and i will fly once more into the harbour of cadiz and burn some of the ships if they have not already sailed truly king philip's friends have stirred up my subjects and the rebellions cost me more gold than ever you sir francis wrenched from the spaniards but i'll have no open war unless i be forced thereto by my enemies I did but singe King Philip's beard. I entreat I may finish my work and break the armada before it comes in its full strength. I say I will have no provoking of war. You shall not stir without my orders. Bangs her fists on table. Drake stamps his foot. Pray heaven you be not ruined. 
madam at least let us be prepared prepared have i not given my dockyards to hawkins who will not suffer a beam or spar to be unready truly but silence i have made howard of effingham my lord high admiral and you sir francis drake compasser of the world vice admiral your grace it was well done but we must have men to serve under us food to feed them food in reserve powder and shot for this we must have money your majesty war and sparing suit not together war and the makers of war suit well enough i see you will all join with drake to drag me into fighting we have sought peace and ensued it but an end is come now to peaceful courses your highness's enemies are many we have the lords of half the earth coming against us truly philip will turn back at the last that he will not his heart is fixed on conquering england he has commanded the duke of parma to have an army ready in holland to come over as soon as the duke of medina sidonia and his armada land here look madam on this chart how easily they i know i know in my poor opinion we ought to have a sharp eye upon the duke of parma lest they all come upon us in the same hour if so i tremble for the realm which will be at once overwhelmed with armed men all this i have heard before but the spaniard tarries i can ill spare the treasure which shall perhaps be poured out in vain preparations not vain your highness our ships made after hawkins plan are light and swift and we will do well against the heavy spanish galleons but we must have more more what have we your grace knows your best ships like the triumph the victory elizabeth jonas the bear london southampton and the coast towns will send ships the lord high admiral he will command in the ark raleigh which i have built he will my kinsman hawkins has ships the west countrymen will come out after my flag i can lead a squadron yet this is little indeed beside that which attacks us you speak sir francis as a bold and faithful servant we shall not fail in courage either if need be for the meanwhile we will reserve our answer but madam listen i now command you to do naught to provoke war seeing that upon your own showing we are in so poor a plight you will not treat for peace unarmed queen rises furious i will treat or not treat for peace as i will and no other way he who dares to disobey me i will send to the tower as i am king harry's daughter sweeps to door left followed by lady-in-waiting and page burleigh rises drake and raleigh rush after queen listen your highness raleigh kneels clasps his hands i beseech your majesty i entreat sinks down on chair queen goes out left with lady and page raleigh rises stamps his foot intolerable and again i say intolerable alas my lord cannot you move the queen to see her necessity these delays will ruin her men say you can do more with her grace in one hour than seven others can in a year burleigh rises wearily i will sir walter i am old very old and weary of strife i have weathered storms full often yet i will urge this matter upon her to the uttermost i would rather go to the tower than that the neglect of this present time should imperil her majesty in this country give me your arm i have grown stiff and tired in the queen's service help me to the door i will speak roundly with her highness ah me ah me raleigh leads burleigh to door left exit burleigh sighing deeply drake crosses to right of stage raleigh turns to drake shrugs his shoulders here's tribulation courage the wind will be around before long at present it blows northeast by east we must continue to set things in readiness that all be prepared at the changing of her grace's humour i will go straight to plymouth you follow me there long have we waited for this hour which is now close at hand when we can once and for all do open battle with the spaniard and against his whole might 
Come Spain, come the whole world, and we will beat them back. Exeunt. End of Act One. Friday morning, July twenty ninth, fifteen eighty eight. The Ho at Plymouth. Enter left, Sir Francis Drake and Sir Walter Raleigh, who play bowls. They stand right, Raleigh towards centre of stage, and roll balls to left. The wind is rising. There will be more storm anon. There was a tempest last night such as few remember at this season of the year. But our ships are as safe out in the channel as here in Plymouth Sound. Look out across the sea there. My thoughts go westward. Westward ho. The new world is there, and we must plant new Englands, Sir Francis. Then must we win the sea. One day we shall. Look, the sun breaks forth as a fair omen, and the waves dance merrily in our hearts. I'll throw again. Throws ball. That was well thrown. Truly it was so. If life is a game, would I might reach my goal as easily. Sometimes I think that I am Fortune's tennis ball, which she will throw where she likes. She has sent you up high at present, Sir Walter. The Queen has you much in favour since the laying of your mantle at Her Grace's feet that muddy morning. <laughs> I say that because her royal foot had trod upon it, the cloak should never be brushed again. Her Highness did commend the saying. <laughs> Drake slaps him on the shoulder. By my troth, you're a bold swaggerer, Riley. Tis mine to throw. Now for the mark. Throws. That rolls well. It should strike. It has verily. Even so, would I hit the Spaniard? Nay, I will lay on again. Throws and sends his opponent's ball away. Now, by my life. They are all scattered. Picks up a ball. Scattered they are. I'll throw once more. What's this? Enter on left in haste. Will of Babacombe. Raleigh drops Paul. Put hand on sword. What? Have the Spanish ships been sighted? They be here. They be here. The Spaniards be come, Sir Francis. Tom Fleming is a sea captain of these coasts, hath spied the Spanish fleet out yonder, like a great crescent seven miles wide. Where? They be making for the lizard. I've sent the news to the Lord Admiral. Tis well. The Lord Admiral will rejoice. Truly he will. At last. At last. Here, fellow, take this for thy good news. Now, send through the land the tidings which will put joy into every true man's heart. Ere dusk, the beacons must be lit upon the hills throughout the country, and along the coast, Hastings, Rye, Folkestone, Dover. They'll know the news in London before night. I tell you, Sir Francis, the men are saddling their horses in hot haste. From Badiford, Barnstaple, Tavstock, Taunton, and many a town, they gallop to the coasts and beseech you that they may join your fleet. Verily, Sir Francis, I think men would mock in any rude cask that they might be led by ye. We will lead them. The hour has come for open battle. Enter left, soldiers and citizens. Jock, Ab Thomas, Dickon, Nan, Alice on left. They rush in and turn facing audience. Drake stands center. Raleigh and Will on left. Open the battle! To arms! To arms! The Spaniards are here! Long life to Queen, the Lord High Admiral! Long life to Sir Francis Drake! Exit Will, waving his cap, followed by citizens, etc., shouting, Long life to Sir Francis Drake! Shall we not go and arm ourselves at once? Nay, we throw again. Throw again? While the balls are clean rolled away. Let us come, let us come. Exit, Raleigh. I'll throw once more. Wherefore not? There's time to finish the game of bowls and then beat the King of Spain. Exit. Interlude. Scene same. Enter left. Will, Nan, Alice, Jock, who stand in a row facing the audience. 
they've lit the beacon now in plymouth town and onward has the glaring war flame sped the call to arms it goeth up and down from lizard point along to beachy head o'er dover castle is a bright beam shed to arms arise the merry men of kent on surrey's heath the fire is blazing red in london night shall not in sleep be spent the spaniards come and wide the word is sent now do the horse and rider gallop forth by town and hamlet all the wakeful night the news is bounding onward to the north high o'er the plain shines bravely lincoln's light on york and durham beacons soon are bright and on the rocks of peak and reckon drear crowned with fire welsh mountains come in sight from michael's mount to carlisle doth appear in flames the tidings that the spaniards hear scene two the camp at tilbury enter left jock takes his place centre standing stiff sword in hand now steady most stout-hearted citizens enter left nan and alice with baskets and so this is the camp at tilbury ay this is the camp to which come valiant soldiers from all parts of her grace's kingdom if the spaniards come we are prepared to defend london to the uttermost ye talk bravely i tell you the duke of medina sidonia will cross my dead body when he enters the house of john burwood herb merchant of bucklersbury good john burwood how long hast thou stood stiff like that since dawn dawn of day hast stood there since dawn and hast thou eaten nothing but little good mistress nan i had maybe a trifle a loaf of bread perchance some cheese a drink of whey some beer there was a bit of roast meat i bought in the market too i and three eggs and some strawberries that an honest man from maidstone gave me but that was hours and hours ago master burwood thou'lt die of hunger friend jock take a morsel of this bread eat good friend the cheese is of the best hands him cup into which she pours milk drink this milk thou'lt fall a-fainting and thou not take something maybe i shall but this is no time for eating and revelling when we have king philip at our very doors the more reason ye should eat and fill yourself with good courage and good victuals ye'll not get the one without the other or my name's not nan hanway mistress hanway i'll listen to thee friends you'll persuade me to take a mouthful a mere morsel true we must eat to fight i have stood so long that i'm stiff my trusty sword i'll hold thy sword hands alice sword gently good mistress alice bridgewater gently the blade is sharp takes food from nan and looks into her basket this cheese is good oh my foot is stiffened with standing i can't feel it stamp thy foot stamp john burwood that will waken thy foot jock stamps his foot and goes on eating ay stamp and eat good friend eat and spare not it will strengthen thy heart each mouthful is destruction to king philip it is give me yet another piece of thy cheese mistress nan looks in basket starts and looks up who's this enter left ap thomas a welshman jock swallowing hastily takes a sword stands stiff again steady most stout-hearted citizens who art thou light-footed where dost thou come from from wales ap thomas is my name i come to fight the very fierce spaniards fall in son of the leek and the mountains and join my lord of leicester's army gathered here at tilbury ap thomas stands a little behind jock draws sword and examines the blade enter left dickon a derbyshire man and who art them long arms i come from derbyshire ay derbyshire bread they say is long in arm and thick in head but i'm no thick in head i never saw a spaniard but i'm come to fight em yes fight him that's what you've got to do now stand fast and grip your swords here's another enter left will of babacombe with barrel under his arm ho baby come wheel ho what is thou here oh, i'm come down from devon on an errand of the admiral powder my boys powder 
so ye be mustering for battle but ye land folks knows not of the spaniards we devon sailors do we've met en in the indies we knows his ways and his prisons we do no man forgets the spaniards prisons scorn to spaniards stand fast now will the queen herself come to the camp i stand not here to answer vain questions but to fight and keep order see my sword tis a trusty blade it is well i tell you that her most gracious noble highness would have taken the lead in the battle herself if my lord of leicester and we of the army had not begged her to stay in safety at havering but she comes to see her troops to-day she is ever foremost in the hour of danger where is the dread armada now the most gallant sir francis drake doth pursue it in the channel so that the duke of zidonia does not make a meeting with the duke of parma else they would land together and march on london march on london if they do then we are ready oi we're ready ready come on ye traitors come on proud despots of the world the spaniards shall not close the highways of the sea oi we'll keep our own that we will my merry man of the midlands that we will hark the trumpets sound afar listen the folks are shouting tis the queen the, the queen? queen yeah her grace is coming look oi oi she's there oi but she's bravely dressed she comes in state her highness comes with lord hunsdon's guard here make room make room room for the queen bustles about pushes others back room enter left queen lady in waiting sir walter raleigh and page god, god save you grace. grace nan aside age has thinned her cheeks but she smiles gaily curtsies and says aloud god keep your grace thanks my wench thank you all good people we rejoice silence for the queen silence your majesty's soldiers are gathered here from the ends of your kingdom from cornwall to berwick they have come to fight the spaniards if they should land and to protect your grace from traitors who for gold would betray you into the hands of your enemies i will speak to my soldiers please you to turn your eyes on those who listen afar off i will watch closely lest any treasonable person be lurking near my loving people we have been asked by some that are careful of our safety to heed how we trust ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treason but i do not desire to live if i am to distrust my faithful and loving people i have the heart of a king and of a king of england too and think foul scorn that parma or spain or any prince of europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm i myself will be your general judge and rewarder i doubt not that by your obedience to my general and your valour in battle we shall shortly have a famous victory over these enemies of my god my kingdom and my people exeunt shouting god, god save the queen. queen scene three the same scene enter left nan and alice they stand right enter jock in haste from left what, what news what news what, what news, news of the fight? fight news of the fight the spaniards have come in all their strength all their ships san philip san martin san this and that and the other all their mightiest men medina sidonia de valdez dons and princes soldiers sailors enough to frighten all the fiends heaven save us ay indeed look at the skies they're black as night i weep for our ships and for our men alas alas weep not weep not our small boats can live in rough seas they move swifter than the heavy spanish galleons the storm fights for us sir francis drake and a good south-west wind are sweeping the channel maybe we'll win if we do if we do win through by my faith man we long remember this day exeunt end of act two alice whitehall london enter left queen followed by lady in waiting page lord burleigh sir walter raleigh jock nan and alice queen seats herself on throne in centre 
sceptre and orb in her hands lady in waiting page and raleigh on left burleigh on right jock nan and alice behind burleigh all standing except queen and burleigh burleigh rises and bows to queen a great victory your majesty truly my ears are deaf with the firing of pieces and ringing of bells hark ding ding dong bell ding ding dong bell from deptford to westminster they make the old belfry shake my people do rejoice at our preservation what says sir francis of our scattered foes a messenger from sir francis drake is lately come may it please your highness to hear him enter left will of babacombe bring him forward will bows and kneels what is his message will rises sir francis doth say that he doubts not by the grace of heaven so to handle the matter with the duke of zidonia as he shall wish himself at st mary port among his orange trees all laugh among his orange trees thou art a devon lad so i be our brave sailors in the west country have done us good service what drake hath not already done methinks the tempests will soon accomplish truly your grace will there be day and night a storm in the north sea that shakes heaven and earth the spaniards go before it thinking to round the cape of scotland and find water and repairing of their galleons on the western coasts even here the heavens are black and the wind roars the heavy ships of spain will fare sorely your grace has indeed seen marvels from your youth to now near on threescore years you may spare your arithmetic my lord for those like yourself whom it suiteth not so old not so old yet nay never never unfading gloriana unfading gloriana my good people but see you here comes sir francis himself enter left sir francis drake what news of the foe sir francis your highness in spain tis reported that their armada has won a great victory a great victory a good jest truly for soon shall it be shown and we will declare it that this mighty fleet of one hundred and forty sail has been scattered by thirty of her majesty's own ships of war marvellous marvellous and we have shuffled this invincible navy from cornwall to portland where the spaniards shamefully left don pedro de valdez with his mighty ship then from portland to calais where they lost hugh de moncado and his galleys from calais they were chased by squibs from their anchors it was by her majesty's own most excellent counsel that the fire-ships were sent amongst them we did take the fire-ships as a most prudent device never did anything please me more than to see the enemy flying with the southerly wind to the northward as the lord admiral hath told you though we had no powder nor shot and no food we did put on a brag countenance and pursued as long as we were able you did well your highness the winds and waves have fought for us too the ships are crushed on the rocks and the noble dons in their velvet and jewels are robbed and slain by the wild islanders only a few are escaped to spain besides those who are in your majesty's hands to do with as your princely wisdom doth ordain what prisoners have you foremost is don pedro de valdez leader of the andalusian squadron a man of great estimation with the king of spain the don is here bring him hither enter left don pedro de Vatais. drake brings him forward the leader of the andalusian squadron madam they were a valiant foe prepared to sell their lives with blows now by my troth tis a pity that an enemy's soul should be so nobly lodged he is magnificent to lady see you wench they wear the sleeves slashed in spain and tis a brave fashion to de valdez your ransom my lord must be great to be worthy of your nobleness a goodly ransom can i promise you i only desire now 
to be free from the presence of these base creatures as for our defeat his majesty sent us to fight men and not the tempests we will send our prisoners back to recount the worthy achievement of their invincible and dreadful navy and to tell king philip another tale from that he looked to hear yea verily for they did not in all their sailing round england so much as sink or take one ship bark pinnace or cockboat of ours or even burn as much as one sheepcoat in this land ye have done your work well and the storm has saved us from our enemies he blew with his winds and they were scattered so shall it be remembered for ever most loving thanks i give to my lord high admiral and to you sir francis drake i am right thankful that your grace made choice of me to be actor in so great a cause and what shall we give to you sir walter and to all our brave and loving subjects who have sent ships or imperilled their lives in our service to-day i dare not say whatever you give little or great i thank your majesty i would fain see a medal struck which should bear the words it was done by a woman for it is to her grace that our eyes turn in this the hour of victory God God save save Queen Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth. and verily this day's work shall be spoken of and the fruits thereof enjoyed in times which are far off for now is the might of spain broken now is the new world open before us and the ocean remains as the inheritance of the people of our land hail mighty queen before whose throne we bow and twine the victor's laurels to set upon thy brow Around thy throne attendant, thy servants here are found. The rings of thy blast of trumpet, if our time shall sound. Hail, mighty queen, hail, great in war and peace. Move down to distant ages with praise that shall not cease. Exeunt in procession. End of Act Three. End of The Story of Miramata by Amos MacDonald.